I was wrong about this knife. Let's talk about why. What's going on guys? Zach back here with another video. If this is your first time on the channel, so please hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and if you have been here before, welcome back. Yes, from the intro of this video, I was wrong about the Benchmade bug out, sort of. And that's what I wanna talk about today, of why I might've been wrong about this knife. And previously, from about six, seven, maybe eight months ago, of my beef with Benchmade. Uh, I'll leave a link to that video down in the description, but let's talk about my thoughts on it currently. So in the previous video, I said that the bug out was completely overrated and no one should ever buy it. And especially at the $170, $180 price point that it is right now, it is completely and totally overpriced. Now my opinion on that still stands. I, I don't think that this knife is worth $180, not in any ballpark would I pay $180 for it. So why do I have it? Well, I got the bug out in a trade with a guy on Instagram, Kevin, who has kind of been turned into a good buddy of mine. And from my end, it was more so just to see what the hype was about because nowhere close would I pay that money for both of those knives. Um, However, I did feel comfortable doing a trade because that wasn't really money I was spending. I don't know. For me, I felt better about getting it in a trade versus paying money out the door for it. That was just me. But um, back on topic, the Benchmade bug out. So for me, it was more so just something to try out. Why I feel differently about the bug out now having it in my hands, been using it, and how has it been? using it and all of that in real life versus just seeing specs on paper. So starting off, price point, we can't ignore that. So for $180, you are getting a um, FRN glass, uh, basically like fancy plastic handles, which everybody complains about, including myself. Um, S30V on the blade steel, which isn't the fanciest thing in the world, but it is a decent steel. Regardless of what everyone is saying nowadays, saying S30V is kind of outdated and all of that, it's still a good steal. So I'm not gonna complain about that. Um, you have Benchmade's um, access lock and a short deep carry pocket clip. Now what I, the scales that I have on here right now, um, Kevin, who I got it in a trade from, already had these scales on, and these are from Aimfront. And the, the pattern here, Aimfront calls it their rectangle pattern. Um, these retail for about $60. They're aluminum scales. And in my opinion, these are what Benchmade should have used from the beginning. Now I know that they have their bailout, which is their more tactical styled bug out. Um, same kind of concept with the lightweight materials and all of that, but they do have the aluminum scales. Um, but again, these, these rectangle pattern scales from Aimfront, I think they replicate an AR-15 magazine, which I'll be right back. So you have AR-15 magazine, you have rectangle style from Aimfront. Now, you tell me, but that seems to be pretty much of a exact match. Um, but like I said, aim front scales, these retail for about $60. So all in this knife brand new is about $240, which is nuts. I, I think that that price is completely and utterly egregious and nowhere would I ever pay that much. Um, but having not paid for it and getting, getting it in a trade, I actually think this is a fantastic knife and I hate to say it because I hate to give Benchmade any kind, any kind of perk or um, any kind of pros to whatever Benchmade is doing because I really can't stand them. That's my personal opinion. If you have differing opinions, feel free to, to let's, let's have a conversation down in the comments. But uh, yeah, I 
I hate to say it, but I love this knife. And I feel like, I don't know, I feel like this is what Benchmade got right. Um, the design is great. I like the, the insanely thin profile. Like, I don't know, I, I appreciate everything about it. Coming from a guy who absolutely despises Benchmade in all fashions. Um, I, I really like this knife. Um, carrying it in the pocket is insane because it weighs nothing. So basketball shorts, summertime carry, everything like that is going to be an absolute breeze. Um, the, the general profile of the, of the knife being that it's such a small and thin knife meant to be exactly that. Um, it's geometry is absolutely perfect when it comes to slicing and everything like that. So actually using it, it's a fantastic knife. Um, the, the coating on it, which I think is a Cerakote from the factory, holding up really, really well to the wear. Axis lock again is insanely smooth and I did buff out the, the washers on here. So it is absolutely drop shut. Ergonomically speaking, really, really nice. Um, I appreciate the fact that the jimping is integrated into the liners and not actually on the blade itself. I personally feel like that's a nice touch and gives it just a really comfortable overall feel. Let's get into some alternatives to the Benchmade bug out. That if you don't wanna spend the $180 base on the bug out, what can you buy? that's gonna give you basically an equivalent to the performance of the bug out. Well, first off is what I got before I even had the bug out and what made me pretty much anti bug out in general. And that's gonna be the Kaiser Drop Bear. And the Drop Bear has a very similar profile to the bug out. If we have it out here, it's basically one for one when it comes to dimensions. Um, the, the scales are shaped a little differently, um, not insanely differently. The biggest difference is gonna be the blade shape, um, the, the Benchmade being a drop point, and the Kaiser being a spear point. So the tip of the drop bear comes direct in line with the pivot versus the bug out sort of follows the spine a little bit. Um, now let's talk about the drop bear. Now the drop bear from factory has a anodized black aluminum handle scale, which is perfect. Uh, deep carry pocket clip, which is similar to the bug out. You do have full steel liners. So if that's your preference, you want full steel liners, um, the drop bear has you covered. Um, 154 cm steel. So a little bit of a downgrade, but still in that similar, you know, mid tier category when it comes to steels. I don't think S30V is a super steel, but it's also not budget. It's kind of riding that middle ground, which 154 CM does as well. But you still have a relatively thin blade profile and with Kaiser's clutch lock, and what I appreciate about Kaiser is they actually send you a spare set of hardware, including Omega Springs. So out of the box with Kaiser, you get an extra set of Omega Springs and the clutch lock by Kaiser is adjustable. So the spring tension you can actually set to three different levels between a low tension, a medium tension, and a high tension. And I think that is really, really nice to see from the factory. And as well, um, it is riding on bearings. So whatever your preference is, um, you can either go with Kaiser with the bearings and this knife I believe comes in at around $100. So this version right here on Amazon right now is $120. And the nice thing about Kaiser and the drop bear is they have so many different configurations. I think last time I checked there was about seven or eight different configurations for this knife. You have a, in the, with you want still the aluminum handles, they do have a gray aluminum with a satin blade. And they also have a couple varying options of micarta and um, blade options as far as black or satin. They also have um, a bunch of different fat carbon handle scales with varying steels. You can get um, S35VN, you can get LMAX, you can get, I think they have an S45VN now. Um, so you can get more premium and I think those range up to about $200 for 
the the fancier versions. Uh, you can get a titanium and LC200N drop bear for 160. For the fat carbon and LMAX, you're looking at 220. For the fat carbon and 20 CV, you're looking at 198. And for the fat carbon and S45 VN, you're looking at 209. And they even have a, a really budget $70 version in Nitro V and Ultim for about, I think I just said $70. So there's insane amount of price range and even up into the, the 20 CV S45 LMAX versions, you're looking right competitively in the same ballpark as the stock standard S30 V. And even less on the price range if you're adding on aftermarket scales. Like I said, with in this configuration, brand new is $240. But if you wanna get fat carbon, full liners, uh, bearings, and S45, 20 CV, or LMAX, you're looking at $30 less than what this price range comes at. Now let's talk about a different um, competitor when it comes to the bug out, and that's going to be the Spyderco Para 3, this one being the lightweight version coming in at about, so Blade HQ right now has the lightweight Para 3 coming in at $133. Now $133, that comes in about $50 less than the bug out. You're getting still the, the reinforced nylon handle scales, so still that sort of plastic. I think Spyderco does a little bit better of a job with their FRN handle scales than Benchmade does, my personal opinion. Um, you do have a wire deep carry pocket clip and what sets this one apart differently than the bug out is the front side here, actually there is no liner, it's just all FRN. And the only steel you have on the front side here is gonna be the lock itself. That is the only steel inside of the the lightweight pair of three is just the the compression lock other than that there is a steel insert on this side so the the show side um, for the washer to sit on and then on the other side i believe it is just the plastic so you're you have a washer on one side plastic on the other and then just the compression lock on the internals so pretty simple when it comes to um, Internals here. This one is the CTS BD1N steel and coming from Spyderco, you know, it's going to have a uh, dead on uh, perfect heat treat as Spyderco typically nails their heat treat on every single steel that they offer and this one is going to be in the Either a bead blast or a stone wash. I can't really tell. I think it's a bead blast because It doesn't really have the same stone washing that my other pair of threes do but this is also another option. Um, as far as competitive price goes, you're looking at $50 less, uh, similarly-ish comparable steel, um, same general makeup as far as internals and weight goes. And yeah, the Para 3 is honestly just one of my all-time favorite carry knives. You get really good ergos when it comes to handle placement and then just a phenomenal blade shape and blade profile thanks to the massive flat grind. There's also the Hogue Deco, which I don't have in the collection, but that is the usually the top tier competitor when it comes to the bug out. And that one comes in either 20 CV or Magna Cut, and I think that's just about it when it comes to competitors for the bug out. But honestly, let's get back to it. This knife just is good, and I hate to say it, it's a good knife. It's well built, it's got a great design, it's got good intentions behind it, being geared to light, no frills, no extra added weight to the pocket, you know, just your basic, simple pocket knife. And I think that's the big draw to this knife is it is a no frills, no fancy anything knife. And that is Benchmade's pretty much, for the most part, has been their appeal for a long time, is a no frills utility built knife. And again, I hate to say it, but Benchmade, you did good on this one. If you like the FRN, good on you. I personally don't. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of uh, any type of FRN. And like I said, the only time I am is on the Spyderco because they did a really good job with the grip here. It gives a really nice traction pattern. And 
it again it's just built better you can't really squeeze this one like you can squeeze the benchmade it's it's just a good knife i put it in my pocket not really expecting to love it and it stayed in my pocket for a good week week and a half two weeks steadily every single day and even now still finds its way into the rotation it's just a good knife if you can find one for a good deal I would say a good deal on a Benchmade bug out is anywhere but anything less than about 150 bucks. I think 150 is about the most that I would pay for a bug out. So if you can find one on the secondary, absolutely pick one up. If you can find one on sale or on clearance anywhere, definitely pick one up for yourselves. I don't think you'll really regret it because you know, honestly, if I would have paid 130, 140 for this knife, I would have been just happy. So that's my two cents in the whole Benchmade bug out thing. Again, this kind of goes against that entire video that I did months ago talking about Benchmade and their downfall and how I think that they are really messing up their demographic and hurting the industry. But you know, if Benchmade can raise their prices the way that they're doing and still be successful, good on them. I, I don't think it's a really great practice, but if that's what they want to do, then that's what they want to do. Um, again, they're not getting any of my business directly, but that's my personal opinion. Let me know what your thoughts down are in the comments. And if you have any alternatives that you love, as opposed to the Benchmade bug out, leave them down in the comments below. And with all that out of the way, I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.